So to answer the question, why is it so difficult to be great at both weightlifting, powerlifting, building muscle, and cardio? Well, the answer is because... Coach Greg, and today I'm gonna to be going over the different energy systems of the body and explaining to you exactly why it's so difficult to be good at both lifting weights and cardio. Gonna give you the tips and steps to be good at both and how to differentiate what energy system you're using during the sporting event that you're about to do. Don't worry, I'm not gonna confuse you, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple so that even the morons can understand. So we have three different energy systems, the first being the anaerobic alactic energy system. This is done for very short durations. Call it five, six, seven seconds. Maybe a 40 yard dash, Olympic lifting where they lift the weight over their head, or a one rep max bench press or squat. So the main energy source for this, it's ATP, adenosine triphosphate comes from creatine phosphate combined with ADP, adenosine diphosphate. You don't need to remember any of that, but what you do need to remember is this. If you add creatine to your diet, you will be able to perform hard all out efforts for a bit longer. Even if it's one second, it's going to help you immensely. Think of it, you're running the 40 yard dash, you ran it in 4.5 seconds. With creatine, maybe you run it 4.45 seconds. A Little bit faster, the difference between making the NFL and not making the NFL. In the gym, the difference between bench pressing 450 pounds and not getting it up and getting it stuck on your chest or locking it out. Is that not worth it? Creatine, whether it's HCL or just good old creatine monohydrate, proven to be effective, proven for decades. The great thing about this energy source is it's ready right now, right now. If the div tries to bite me right now and I see it, I have energy to run. If a bear comes and attacks me, I have energy right this second to take off. It's amazing. The problem is it runs out faster than friggin' last time. It's not there for very long. Even if you train at the highest level, Usain Bolt, not even Usain Bolt can last a full 10 seconds. That's why the winner of the 100 meter dash, it's not the person that runs the fastest for 100 meters, it's the person who ran the fastest at the start and slows down the least towards the end. Yeah, that's right, you're not accelerating for 100 meters, you are in fact slowing down. So the anaerobic alactic energy system, it provides a lot of power real quick, but it doesn't last very long, kind of like Will Tennyson in the bedroom with a donut. Am I right or am I right? So if you're involved in this kind of sport, whether it's football, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, you need a work to rest ratio of one to six. That means for every one second of effort, you need to rest six seconds in order to replenish the ATP stores that were used during the activity. So practical applications means if you're doing a bunch of one rep maxes, you need to rest at least six times as long as it took you to do that set. You need to replenish the energy. So if you do a set of one rep and it takes you six seconds, you need to rest 36 seconds to recover from that. And even more, if you wanna be at 100% your ultimate true power. Next up, the anaerobic lactic energy system. This one, this is my favorite and this is where I excel. I'm gonna tell you why. This energy system, it lasts past that 10 second zone, more so 30 seconds to two minutes, maybe up to three minutes. In this energy system, glucose is the primary source of fuel being used by the body. It can come from within your blood or from muscle glycogen. This is where you're eating your carbs and getting energy from the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are stored as glycogen in the muscle as well as in the liver. And have you guessed why they call it the anaerobic lactic energy system? Well, anaerobic means without oxygen, so your body is not actually using oxygen at this point to fuel the workout. And lactic stands for lactic acid, meaning you're producing lactic acid. Do you know that feeling when your quads start burning, when you're riding a bike up the hill or you're sprinting and you're like, oh my goodness, this really hurts and you have to push through the pain barrier? That's the anaerobic lactic energy system. To me, it is the hardest energy system to train. The one that burns the most that you have to have that inner drive to really excel at. Anaerobic alactic, 
It's over in five seconds. It's a one rep max deadlift. You walk up to the bar and lift it up as hard as you can and you put it down. It's not really that hard now, is it? It took five seconds. Anaerobic alactic, that's when you go for a Guinness Book of World Records for sumo deadlift in a minute. Ever heard of someone doing that? I would never do something crazy like that, train for six months straight to break the record. No. Or did I? Yeah, that's right. Every single time I was training, I was training to failure, all out harder than last time. I specifically trained to get my anaerobic lactic energy system to milk the most out of it, to maximize its capacity to put out the most amount of power for the longest time possible, and that is how I got the record. You have to know what you're training for to design an exercise program to specifically target the exact needs of the exercise you're about to do. When you're training for one rep max bench press, you don't need to train for a minute. Doing sets of 20, 30, 40 reps, it's not the way to do it. But if you're training for something like the NFL Combine bench press, like I had done 54 reps with 225, it's a completely different energy system. It's a lot different than training for a one rep max. So although my anaerobic alactic energy system is pretty good, I'm pretty strong, I do have a world record in the bench press. My anaerobic lactic energy system, it's that much better. And why? Well, because I trained specifically for it that much more and my genetics are better at doing it for a bit longer. The greater the percentage of fast twitch muscle fibers that you have, the more genetic potential you have to excel at explosive power sports. Sprinting 40 yards, sprinting 100 meter dash, the 40 in football, the one rep max bench press, slam dunk in basketball, a volleyball spike. Extreme reliance on anaerobic alactic energy system coupled with a lot of fast twitch muscle fiber percentage and you're going to be extremely good at these short bursts of power. For me, I don't have as many fast twitch muscle fibers as would be ideal to be an explosive power athlete. They're still pretty good, they could be better, but I did train my entire life to maximize this ability. But I am in fact better at longer bouts of explosive power. For example, when I'm racing on a bicycle for a minute, I'm a lot better compared to other people than when it's an all out sprint for 10 seconds. The reason being my anaerobic lactic energy system is more advanced than my alactic energy system. I'm able to handle lactic acid better and longer than most people. To be good at this, you have to train it over and over again and be willing to put yourself through a lot of pain to handle the lactic acid and say, I don't care. When I'm racing my Zwift bike, I look up at the sign that says, train harder than last time and I don't give up and I keep going harder. I don't give up. And that allows me to get very, very good at this. Now, I'm not in the Olympics. I don't have the most amazing genetics in the world, but it's pretty good. Other people with better genetics that train the right way, these are the people that you're seeing in the Olympics right now. Another important thing to remember when training for this specifically, you want a work to rest ratio of one to six yet again. Anything less than that, you can't recover. So when people are saying they're doing hit cardio, they do one minute hard, one minute easy, one minute hard, one minute easy. How is that possible? Understanding the science that you require a one to six work to rest ratio to recover. So if you don't rest long enough, you're not fully training the anaerobic lactic energy system. You start relying on the aerobic energy system. Hit cardio, it's meant to be anaerobic lactic. Some alactic because you are in fact sprinting and for five, six, seven seconds, you're using that energy system before tapping into the lactic system. But if you're doing one minute hard, one minute easy, back and forth, you're relying heavily on your aerobic energy system. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're not actually training hit cardio. You're training more aerobically. You're training your aerobic capacity, your ability to do cardiovascular exercise for an extended period of time, approaching the lactic threshold or just thereafter. So let's get into the aerobic energy system. This is typically for exercise going past three minutes. An hour, two hours, marathons, ultra marathons, Ironmans, long bouts of exercise, or just going for a walk. It doesn't have to be hard, but the harder you go, the more you approach your anaerobic threshold, the more you're going to improve at your aerobic energy system. Everyone has a point where if they go any harder, 
lactic acid is going to rapidly accumulate in the bloodstream and make it very difficult to continue exercise. It will continue to the point where you just can't anymore. You can't hold that speed or that heart rate and you have to rest to recover to get rid of the lactic acid. Lactic acid, it's not good. It's not something your body wants. And when you have too much carbon dioxide in the body, you start breathing at an accelerated rate. Ever seen me in a Zwift race? Girlfriend Allie, she always talks about it. Why are you breathing like that? No one breathes like that. She doesn't understand just how hard I pushed myself way past my anaerobic threshold. My heart rate is through the roof. It's so high, I can't recover from it. And that allows my body to say, we better get better, we better improve, because this crazy coach Greg, he's gonna go harder than last time again. We need to make him faster to get better, to be more efficient, be better at this, because we need to put out more power. Because coach Greg, he's probably being chased by bears every day, because why else would he put himself through this torture of going harder than last time all the time? The body doesn't know the difference. It thinks fight or flight. This guy, he's going hard now. Breathe harder, pump more blood, do something. He's being chased by a wolf. Doesn't know I'm just trying to win a race against some other person from another country that I'll never meet. So as you train more, your body adapts, your stroke volume, the heart, it pumps out more blood. Your resting heart rate gets lower. You're able to train at a higher maximum heart rate. So when I started riding a bike four years ago, my aerobic energy system, it wasn't very good. Anaerobic, alactic, and lactic systems were great because I was lifting weights all the time, harder than last time, doing leg presses and squats, so I was pretty good. So when I got on a bicycle, I could sprint pretty hard for a short period of time, but the cardiovascular, the endurance, wasn't there. Didn't have the aerobic capacity that I have now. Now, my anaerobic threshold, rather than being in the 150s, it's in the 170s. I can ride my bike above 170 heart rate for 20, 30 minutes and continue to handle the pain because the lactic acid, it's not producing as much as it once was. But if I start going in the 180s, can't do it. It's not going to last. I can only do it for a few minutes because my anaerobic lactic energy system allows me to only handle that much lactic acid for so long. But if I keep training another year or two, I'm going to keep getting better and better and better. Another thing with pre-workouts, one of the reasons they work, yeah, it gets you stimulated, it gets you amped up and you can go more aggressive. If you're not motivated, you don't want to train hard and you take a pre-workout, it gives you more energy. That energy allows you to train harder. Now in the anaerobic lactic energy system, beta alanine in particular is going to allow this energy system to last longer because it buffers lactic acid. That's that thing that causes that pain that you don't like when you're riding up the hill real hard. So if you have less lactic acid, you can go harder than last time, literally. It's been shown to do this in multiple studies. And as far as the aerobic energy system, when you add caffeine and other stimulants, your perceived exertion is diminished. Two people, your twin and you in, in a parallel universe, one's using a pre-workout and one is not. And you say, hey, on a scale of one to 10, how hard are you going right now? They're both going at the exact same pace. The person taking the caffeine, the pre-workout, they're gonna say, it's not too bad. The other person who's not taking the pre-workout, they're gonna say, it's definitely harder than when I was taking the pre-workout at the same intensity. So you can go at the exact same speed, and if you're taking pre-workout, it feels easier. So you do know what that does? You go faster. You go a little bit harder. And so if you go a little bit harder, the body says, we better improve more. We have a stimulus for growth to improve. So taking pre-workout allows you to train harder than last time. And not only that, it increases your time to exhaustion. If you take pre-workout and you have to exercise at a certain rate, say it's 300 watts and you can go for an hour. If you take the pre-workout, maybe it's an hour and a half. So rather than stopping at an hour, you can go longer. And if you go longer, guess what? You burn more calories, you put more stress on the body, and it's forced to recover more. You don't want to overtrain, of course, but so long as you don't overtrain, if you train harder, you're gonna get greater results. And so another byproduct of these three energy systems is heat. When you exercise, you produce heat, and if you produce too much heat, your body can't cool itself off, and being too hot, it's not gonna allow your body to be at homeostasis. So if you start sweating profusely, you're exercising in a hot environment, 
or you're just overheated, you're wearing too many clothes and you're sweating, you can't go as hard or as long as if you're cooler. So please, try not to overheat your body. If you overheat the body, you start sweating too much, you get dehydrated and you can't perform optimally. So because heat is a byproduct of these energy systems, you need to make sure that you're cooling your body off. So how can you apply that? Well, I have a fan when I'm bike riding. I literally carry two little fans to me to the gym. Let me show you them. One hour later. If you're overheated, I bring these two fans. I should probably be using these to record videos. So just a subtle fan, it's gonna help cool my body. And if you're too hot, like when I'm in Mexico riding a bike, I get so hot, it's unbearable, and I have to slow down. I just can't exercise at the intensity that I want. So doing whatever it takes, it doesn't mean you have to abuse PDs. It literally means you could buy a $25 fan on Amazon. And so in the aerobic energy system, you can use fats, proteins, and carbohydrates for energy preferably fat. And when you do cardio over and over again, week after week, month after month, year after year, you become what's known as, at least what I call, and Covert Bailey, who I read a book back in high school, a better butter burner. It's alliteration and all the Bs. I like alliteration. You become a better butter burner. That means you get better at burning fat. So your body burns a greater percentage of fat while doing cardio than people who don't do cardio. What does that mean? How is that beneficial? Well, let's say I go and ride my bike for two hours. I burn way more fat versus if I'm out of shape and I go for two hours. Not only am I burning more calories because I'm going further, because I'm better at it. And when you're better at it, rather than going 50 kilometers, maybe you ride 70 kilometers, therefore you burn more calories. But the actual fuel source is more focused on fat than carbs. So you're burning more actual fat while doing the activity. Some of it's gonna be carbs and some of it's gonna be protein. But this is what you really need to know. If you're depleted of carbohydrates, as in your glucose is gone, you don't have any more muscle glycogen, your body then starts to rely on amino acids from protein for energy. And so well, why is that bad? Why does that matter? Because amino acids are supposed to build muscle. So if you don't have the carbs, your body might then start relying on protein for energy rather than the protein to build muscle. So next time you wake up and think, oh, I'll do empty stomach cardio. Well, if you don't have any carbs in your system, your body might just start relying on protein for energy. Might say, yeah, biceps. We're gonna use some of you to build and repair the heart because the heart is the most important muscle, more important than the biceps. So if you're on a starvation diet, you're not eating, you're skipping all your meals, you're doing a lot of cardio, you might start getting smaller muscles and who wants that? Smaller muscles, slower metabolism. So rather than being a carbophobe and skipping out on your carbs, you need the carbs to perform the work during the cardiovascular activity. If you have no carbs, it's just harder for most people. And for all the ketogenic dieters out there, how many people do you think are in the Olympics on keto diets, relying solely on fat for energy? No friggin' carbs whatsoever. If it was actually better to be on a ketogenic diet, don't you think every single person in the Olympics would be doing that? Every single Tour de France rider, if they could even get 1% faster from being on a keto diet, they would all be doing it. Also, you might not know this, but when you go and do cardio, the start of the cardio is relying more on carbs and less on fat. And then the longer the duration of the exercise, the greater the reliance on fat versus carbs for energy. So if you do 10 minutes of cardio, during that cardio, say you burn 100 calories, you might burn 10 calories of fat and 90 calories of carbs. But if you look at how much fat you're burning after two hours, you might be burning 90 calories of fat and only 10 calories of carbs. The kindling or the wood to burn this fat is fuel. Think of that as the carbohydrates. It's allowing you to push harder than last time on the bike. You need that muscle glycogen, and then the other is the reliance on body fat for energy. So when you go for a two hour bike ride, the start of the bike ride, mostly carbs being burned, but later on in the bike ride, you're mostly burning fat. Now think of it, during any bike ride, it's not all a reliance on aerobic energy. You stop at the stoplights, and then you have to take off. You're using your anaerobic alactic energy system to get the bike going. 
And anytime there's a hill, maybe it's a minute or two, you're going up the hill, you have to push harder. And so you're relying on your anaerobic lactic energy system. Then on the downhills or on the flats and you're riding along at a normal pace, that's your aerobic energy system. So your body is using all three of these all the time. The anaerobic alactic energy system, it's only like five seconds. Lactic energy system is more like two, three minutes and the aerobic system all the friggin' time. Right now, I'm using my aerobic energy system. That's the one, I only need that. I'm just sitting here doing this with my hands. I don't need a lot of energy. I'm relying on mostly fat. Because I'm a better butter burner, I'm doing a lot of cardio, my body can use fat for energy all the time. After this, I'm gonna go lift some weight. So take the leg press, for example. First few reps, I'm gonna be using the anaerobic alactic energy system and transition to the anaerobic lactic energy system. Then the set's over, and I'm gonna be recovering and using the aerobic energy system. I'm gonna be going back and forth. It's kind of like hit cardio. I'm recovering in between sets, gonna rest a few minutes, do a set, rest a few minutes, make sure that I've recovered. If I wanna lift the best amount of weight and be recovered, I need a work rest ratio one to six. So if a set takes 30 seconds, probably should be resting three minutes in order to put out as much energy as possible. But if you don't care, you're just in the gym to burn fat, you don't really wanna build the most amount of muscle, you don't need to rest that long. You might do a set for 30 seconds and rest a minute, minute and a half, but you're certainly not going to be as strong and you're not gonna build as much muscle because you're not allowing the energy system enough time to fully recover. So to answer the question, why is it so difficult to be great at both weightlifting, powerlifting, building muscle and cardio? Well, the answer is because they rely on different energy systems. It's hard to be the best at all three. If you're training for weights, you're mostly focusing on the first two. If you're doing cardio, it's mostly the last two. Hard to be good at all three. So why is it that some people can be what appears to be great at both? It's because those people have exceptional genetics for all three energy systems. They're just great at everything. And depending on how much fast twitch muscle fiber have, they're gonna be better at one versus the other. You can't be the best at both. No matter what example you give me, you're not going to find someone who's the best at both. Usain Bolt, the best sprinter of all time, he could not have been also the best marathon runner of all time. He could be great at marathons and the best at sprinting, but he can't be both. And in the opposite example, someone could be the best marathoner ever and also great at sprinting, but not the world record holder in sprinting. You can be great at both if you have the genetics for all three energy systems. This is mostly dependent on muscle fiber type. So if you have mostly fast switch fibers, like anyone sprinting in the Olympics, they're obviously gonna have more fast switch fibers and less slow twitch fibers. They're not gonna be able to be the best in the world at marathon running. Then you have the unlucky people with horrible genetics. They don't have the ability to get good at any of these three energy systems. Doesn't mean they can't get better. They can get way better, but they'll never be the best in the world at anything. So in the end, how good you can get at anything, it's depending on the genetic cards you were held for all three of these, muscle fiber type, as well as how hard did you train, how bad did you want it, did you eat properly and train smart. I'm not saying you can't get better than you are. In fact, absolutely you can. But there is a strong genetic component that predetermines just how good you can eventually get. I could train my entire life, I'm not winning a marathon. However, I trained my entire life and I broke world records in powerlifting. So because you can't alter genetics, unless you can time travel on HRT and choose different parents, you need to focus on what you can affect. But what you can affect is how you train and how you train should be dependent on which of these three energy systems you're going to use in your own workouts. Are you a power lifter? Focus on anaerobic alactic. Are you focused on being a bodybuilder? Focus on anaerobic lactic energy systems. If you're focused on cardiovascular endurance, work on the aerobic energy system. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you can in fact focus on a few of them and get better at both. But ultimately, how good you'll eventually become is based on your genetics. Hopefully you learned something, ending it here. GregDuset.com for coaching, Greg Duset IP Pro. 
Watch one of the bloops. Don't forget, get the harder than last time supplements. Visit hgltsups.com. It's going to make a difference. It can help improve your performance. And don't forget, I do have a cookbook, help you lose weight, get in a deficit, you know, lose weight, keep it off, be healthier. That's important. As well, I have coaching from me and my team. And so until next time, I am out.